Yes, December the 15th, 2020, and I'll bring this regular meeting of council to order. With us tonight for the first time at our regular meeting is our new CEO for the town of Swan River, uh, Mr. Jerry Gutro. So welcome, Mr. Gutro, yeah. to the town of Swan River. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Additions to the agenda, we have uh, transfer from uh, machinery replacement reserve for incident command vehicle and telemetry. Is that right how I said that? And the removal of item number uh, 8.5 under the advice of administration. Resolve the agenda for the December 1st, 2020 regular meeting of council and the December 8, 2000, sorry, resolve the agenda for the December 1st, 2020 regular meeting of council and the December 8, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be adopted as received and amended. Moved by Councillor White and seconded by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result the minutes of the December 1st, 2020 regular council meeting and the December 8, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving down to number <coughs> seven, 7.1. Result of the public director of public works report be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Good evening, Councillor Gray. Good evening. Okay, we're on the agenda. We're at 7.2. So, oh, okay. 7.21. 7.2? Yeah. Did we start before 7.30? Uh, no, it's right off. We're at 7.32 right now. Wow. Okay. Result of the November 2020 Protective Services Report be received. Moved by. Thank you. Seven point one. Resolved that Director of Public Works report be received. That was moved by Council Morial, second by Councilor or Deputy Mayor with Tony. Discussion. Councilor Morial. Uh, Mr. Poole, where are we at with the, the PCL upgrade at the water treatment plant? I had a discussion with our project manager and uh, they are looking for a very early tender in 2021. So uh, the contract documents uh, have been reviewed by the water services board and yeah, so uh, I, I'm guessing we're going to see some pricing uh, around mid to late January. Okay, so that'll be capital item on 2021 budget then? It will be. We got the grant in 2020, and since it was a services board project, they uh, we signed that agreement with them. And uh, yeah, they let us know that their their schedule is to tender early 2021. Okay, sounds good. Further discussion? All in favor? Hope? Aye. Carry. Carry. <clears throat> 7 2 1. Result of the November 2020 Protective Services Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor White. I, I see that uh, our chief and our staff remember uh, can't do fire inspections apparently because of COVID. And I just think that that's a uh, concern of mine. I'm not sure uh, if there's any way around that. Is there any comment on that from the administration? Yeah. Appreciate that. Please. 
That's it. Thank you. Anything further? For the discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Aye. 7.3, Council and CO reports. And I'll start tonight with Councilor Gray. Uh, well, we've had a couple of meetings with uh, ministers. Uh, Settlement Services has provided its reports. Everything is going reasonably well there. Uh, Rise is having some trouble getting a meeting date. We were supposed to meet tomorrow, uh, Thursday, but I think that's been canceled. So we have one significant order of business, which is one staff person whose position expires at the end of December unless we extend it. Um, and we've, of course, had the meeting with Minotonis Bozeman. So um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Deputy You're sparkling tonight. That's uh, my Christmas sh sweater I'm sporting. It's our last uh, council meeting before the holidays. So happy holidays to everyone uh, who's watching and to my team who is uh, there at the office and online as well. Um, in terms of my report, uh, everything, all the meetings have already been discussed by Councillor Gray. I don't need to reiterate those. Other than that, I have no other reports at this time. Happy holidays to all of our valued ratepayers. Thank you. Councillor uh, Friesen. Uh, I also have this afternoon with uh, Minister Schroeder Schuler. I left that uh, being a little confused about a few things. Maybe somebody can clear that up about Ditch Road. It seemed to say it was in the hands of the RIM now. I don't understand what that means. Anyway, it's been on the books for about 20 years, and I really don't see why we can't get that fixed. Also, had a meeting with uh, Communities of Care. Um, Gloriana has been working hard. We just got uh, four or five hundred dollars boys gathered up and she's got them wrapped at the Friendship Center and they will be distributed probably later this week. And then Thomas Bolton meeting at the King Hall uh, and we turned the lights on at the museum on Saturday. We lost count after 100 cars went through Saturday night. And Sunday night's been just as good. And then last night I was there again, and uh, 60 to 70 cars driving through. So it's great. I'm so glad that we could do it. It's just that we have to supervise it to make sure no one gets out of their vehicle. Because if they do, then there's a $5,000 fine to the museum. So anybody that goes out there, just drive around slowly and look at the lights. You can drive around two or three times because there's lots to see. And I just thank that whole committee for all the work they did getting the lights up and lit. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, and thank uh, the entire committee from council here too. I was able to go through there on Sunday, I believe it was. So really well done. And a nice addition to uh, something that we can do at this time of the year um, under the restrictions, but it's definitely uh, a nice touch. I also believe everybody in town has gone an extra. I took a drive just around town, and I really think that there's far more lights this year than there has been in years past because we don't have a whole lot else to do. So we put up more lights, more decorations, and I got a letter today from my daughter from High River. The front page was Christmas lights. They light up there park, I guess, they put lights. So we're all doing it, so it's great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Council Morio. Um, not too much this period. Uh, only two meetings attended. Uh, one was discussed already with the Purchase Services uh, Agreement meeting with Minitonis Bozeman, which will be ongoing. And this morning had a Zoom meeting with the Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Schuler, along with a number of other municipalities um, where we brought forward some of our major infrastructure uh, concerns, uh, primarily the resurfacing of uh, 83A or Main Street West uh, here west of the tracks, uh, along with a few of the other uh, re 
regional projects that are in the area that uh, are on people's desks and files for advancing. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilor Morillo, for sharing that this morning. Okay. Uh, Councilor White. Pretty well, the same. I went to the council meeting last Tuesday where we're trying to solve the uh, internal questions. Uh, the shared service meeting, that again, has been reported on. Uh, admit to, uh, a nice thing I felt today uh, at the request of our new CEO, uh, Jerry here, he's asked to meet with all of us as counselors independently to see what our goals are, what our vision is, so hypothetically that we could meld the two, his and ours, and it was an amicable meeting, it was intuitive, and I appreciate your thoughts about the future, which are all positive towards our community, and that's uh, appreciated, Jerry. Uh, I had a call from uh, one of our bosses, a constituent relative to our bylaw officer who had to deal with he had to deal with the bylaw officer, or it could have been a silly thing, but he was so pleased with where the way the bylaw officer handled it. He gave him a timeline, and he was positive, encouraging, and uh, once uh, the two chatted, he said, so please uh, compliment uh, our bylaw person when we get a chance. The lights are beautiful, thank you, counselor. And uh, I, I, I say Merry Christmas to, uh, Happy Hanukkah to all our listening audience. Thank you. Councilor Delorier. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing to report that hasn't been touched on already. Uh, just uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, just one question, 8.5 that was removed from the agenda tonight, will that come into a town meeting? I assume so. Yeah, okay. That's it, okay. Uh, other than things that were already mentioned around the table already, um, I was speaking here just a few days ago with Chief Janai from Sapatoa Cree Nation and, and the issues, obviously, with the case that load of uh, COVID positive that they have in the community is, is, is uh, trying for the, this time. And they're doing the best they can to keep people home and, and safe. Um, but they do have another issue there, and that has been some uh, drinking water. So they've been asking people from the community to donate water if they possibly can. And I know that Aspire Dental Clinic is also taking donations uh, for a bottle of water or any other items that uh, might be uh, able to be given to help out some to an application. Um, and, and what was has been a, a very challenging year for uh, for both business and families alike, I would like to uh, commend all our residents for doing everything we can uh, to help get through this this year together. And uh, it's been tough, but we'll get through this. And, and I'm sure that in 2021 we'll see brighter things where we can start to get together again. But I do thank everybody for doing what they can, and uh, we will get it, get through it. And from uh, our family, from my wife and my kids, to all of you here in our administration, all employees, and all the residents of the town of Swan River, I wish you all the best of the happy or holiday season and, and a merry Christmas. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Gutro, did you want to bring in on that at all? Sure. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. This week is, uh, uh, has, <laughs> this has been just over a week since I've actually arrived here. Uh, my first went, the first week went like a blink of an eye. Most of the children out there blinked like Rudolph's nose. <laughs> I'd also like to commend the staff for helping navigate through this, the systems in the office. And I must say, I'm not much of a copier guy. Um, getting back to serious though, um, we have a fantastic team that I'm working with. Um, this team actually makes me shine. As you know, I attend to the council of sitting in, sitting in on some negotiations with our neighboring municipalities. This week, um, I, this week I also have had one-on-one -on -one meetings with some councils, and not all of yet, and some staff members to get their viewpoints of what changes if you'd like to see with, and support from my office and from our administration. Um, You'll see new ideas coming forward. As mentioned, this administration has uh, decided to work on them. We're going to work on them together. Uh, I think you'll be excited with some of the changes we're going to be proposing to council. Once again, I'd like to thank the opportunity to help guide this council in decision making and allow me to be part of your uh, rebuilding. On behalf of the administration, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to wish you and you and council Merry Christmas. Uh, may your families be blessed and safe during the holiday time, and may your relationships be strong. We would also like to wish you a happy new year and uh, may your 2021 bring us back to somewhat of a normal, safe living, uh, so where we can clear our minds 
we met with their families and friends. So thank you. Thank you. Nicely said. And and on uh, that note, also, I just wanted to uh, say on behalf of council to thank Ms. Hinkleman and Mr. Poole for sitting in as uh, acting Ms. Hinkleman and, and Mr. Poole's uh, helping that role uh, and keeping uh, everything running accordingly. So we do appreciate everything that you have done in this during that time uh, leading up to the hiring of Mr. Control. Thank you. Moving on. <clears throat> 8.1. There's no resolution there. This is on the hospi hospitality uh, tax. Um, this has just been brought forward as a, more or less a discussionary item. Uh, there had been some discussion uh, perhaps of this at Arise Me that came out to the public in some uh, social media and I thought that it probably would be wise for us to maybe kind of lay that out where that is right now and as far as implementation it's not happening but I don't know if, if the members of RISE uh, from our committee want to make a comment on that a little bit but uh, I just want to make sure that the public knew that this is not something that's uh, being implemented in the, in the short term. Deputy Mayor Wood, Tony, did you want to comment on that at all? Um, I guess first of all at that meeting I was not uh, available to be in attendance on the discussion around the hospitality tax. Um, I think this council knows how my feelings towards um, the hospitality tax in terms of um, the town continuing with a business tax. I think that um, we have uh, a long road to go with that and discussions to be had, but um, I, I think that's all I can say. Uh, Councillor Gray was at that meeting and I'm sure that he can uh, provide more insight on on that okay councillor gray well the, your worship you and i were both there but um the the hospitality tax was discussed as one of about eight items that were on the agenda it was um proposed actually by another municipality um but it would affect us mostly but the discussion was as councillor wintoni makes reference that there would be a designated purpose for such a tax. There was no discussion of a time frame when it would be implemented. It was particularly related to tourism. That is that people that were primarily tourists would be the persons who would pay the primary part of that tax. But it was a it's part of a larger discussion that requires all of the municipalities to coordinate and requires us certainly to have some deep consideration. It is not something that has been brought to this council. It's not something that we anticipate bringing to the council anytime soon, but it will have ramifications for RISE, whether we do or don't implement it, because there is a finite pot of money that's available from each of the councils. And um, we will have to make those determinations, probably not for this coming year, given the fragile state of the economy, um, but probably in the years that follow, the council that is there will have to consider this. Yeah, and, and you're, you're right. I, I was at that meeting as well. There had been some discussion about this actually years past as well. And uh, there had been some feedback from uh, naming the, uh, the hotels uh, in our community. But uh, at this time, with the committee was basically just kind of throwing it around and definitely nothing in the short term as far as implementation. And there would be some discussion as far as, you know, if this is something that would happen with uh, the hotel uh, association as far as uh, where the monies would be going to and, and so forth. So as Councillor Montoni said, with the um, business tax, hospitality and all that, those are all things that are up for discussion. So to be transparent, I think this is what we are, our responsibility and, and this is what we've done. Any further discussion on that? Uh, to go ahead, uh, Dr. Mayor Wintoni. I guess the one thing that I uh, would like to mention too is that um, tourism, for example, in, in is what the uh, proposed um, 
to actually be used for. I just want, to, I guess, it to be clear that all of our businesses within our community, whether or not it's a hotel or whether or not it's a dealership or um, any of our downtown businesses, we all benefit from tourism, from uh, guests coming to our community. So I, I think that uh, in my earlier sentiments that uh, we have a lot of discussion on that topic and a lot to think about as we move forward. Anything further? Okay, so moving on, 8.2. <clears throat> Resolve that council be authorized to attend the virtual AMM annual general meeting held on November the 23rd, 2020. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Resolve that Councilor Morio be authorized to attend the collective bargaining negotiations and planning meeting held October 26th to the 28th, 2020 in Swan River. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor DeLaurier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. <laughs> Four. Resolve that the signing offices for the town of Swan River be either Mayor Lance Jacobson or Deputy Mayor Johnny Mentoni and either Chief Administrative Officer Jerry Gutro, Assistant CEO Patricia Hickelman or Chief Financial Officer Terrence Ganita. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 8.5, resolve that the security fencing be kept at the fire damaged property located at 124 Fifth Avenue South beginning January 1st, 2020. All costs will be added to the real property tax bill for this premise if the owner does not pay for the cost of this service. Moved by. Your, your Worship, um, because I've been approached by somebody related to that matter, um, to act, I'm going to declare a conflict, not participate in the conversation, uh, nor listen to it. Okay, sounds good. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Besides cost, did the insurance company say why they felt that it would be okay to get rid of the fencing? Um, they, they, don't, they don't see a need for it? you know, even in light of the history of the building? I don't know all of the details of what's happening there, but they've just indicated they will no longer repaying the cost of the fencing going forward. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear uh, Ms. Henkelman, and I, I would like to hear that comment if I could. I don't know all of the details. It's just that the insurance company has indicated they will no longer continue to pay for the fencing um, after December 31st. Did you hear that? Okay, uh, Councilor Moran. Um, with this, like I understand that the insurance company doesn't want to, or is no longer interested in paying for the fencing after December thirty first, because the issues or whatever they have there may go into January, whatever that issue is and stuff like that. But I believe uh, both the owner and the insurance company has been provided. Um, notifications and our bylaw that uh, the timelines have run out that where that building should be torn down um, and I understand the insurance plans and tearing it down somewhere in the future um, so I maybe we need to like move ahead with this resolution but uh, give them let them know that if they don't tear it down as per re our, our request that the municipality will be tearing it down and invoicing them or putting on taxes because um, it's it's long past the 90 days 
of our bylaw when it was uh, had, this, had the fire and they've had ample time to decide what they do. So maybe we tear it down instead of fence it. Well, there's, I have difficulty understanding the fence is up. So they're gonna take it down and put a new one up if I've read this correctly. They're gonna leave it up? Okay, and then and then let me read it. I also meant the fence remain in place. We're at the time of the condition we remain the same demolition. So I'm completely in favor with Council Mario. If he's not paying his things when he should, tear it down and put it to his taxes. Okay. I'll let uh, Ms. Hinkleman, Mr. Control, answer um, in that order. Um, Chief Dorch just wanted to make sure, I mean, they're working through this process. They just served um, another notice. They just need to make sure they don't want to have that fence to come down and then us decide to pay the cost and put it back up again at a later date. Just wanted to ensure that that fence stays up there's no additional cost, so it'll just be the $300 a month that it costs to keep that fencing up. Yes, okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor Council, um, from my, some of my understanding, some of this is uh, illegal right now, so I um, won't really comment a bunch of what's happening here. But for the uh, safety of our residents, uh, I, you know, administration is recommending right now that this fence stays up uh, at the cost, we the time we pay that cost. Um, you know, we, we hope we can recuperate this in the future by putting it on the tax bill. Um, however, for the, for the amount of money that, that it is right now, I think for the safety of our residents, we have to keep it up. Uh, in, in the meantime, our, our bylaw service and administration will keep serving notices. Uh, if we have to, we can uh, start report action afterwards, but that's just something that we're looking at. Right, and, and I was gonna actually comment, and thank you for those comments, but uh, you know, we have to be cautious of where we're going in the discussion as far as legalities and such. Normally, when we add something to taxes, you know, uh, say if you don't cut your grass, the town comes in and cuts your grass, and we add those costs to taxes. We have a bylaw that, you know, allows us to do that. Do we, what, what, what is the mechanism that allows us to do that just, just because an invoice cost to that? Like, I guess, what, what, what 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 protect what allows uh, us to determine that this is a, this is a cost that should be applied to the taxes? You know, like uh, rather than you know we could make arbitrary things up that would would get applied to uh, people's taxes. Like usually, there's like a, a bylaw that triggers this. Well, the fire prevention bylaw, I believe, has that in there. It's yeah. A condition that if we have to board it up, okay, then it. And it's not okay. paid that it goes by. We need to survive. Yeah, I, I guess my question is in, in regards to making sure we can get our money back. I want to make sure that we're we're on solid footing to, to be able to add this to taxes. And there are only certain things that we can put on to taxes, I'm sure. Okay. And we would then this would be one of them? Like we, we would be on solid ground to be able to recoup this? Mr. Mayor Council, this is actually under the fire prevention bylaw that we have, um, as, as well as part of the safety mechanism for the town as well. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> I don't know how we rang Councillor Gray back in unless he's seen us vote. Resolve the res resolution for two, uh, 2016.529 vacation and bank time policy be rescinded. Moved by, this is at the advice of administration, moved by Councillor Morio, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? I guess if administration has anything to say about it, or is it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, this uh, is actually looking for vacation, and this is, was brought to my attention the first, first early week. Uh, there's a policy that's actually contradicting in this uh, particular 2016 resolution council uh, the vacation and bank time uh, we've kind of we've gone through this uh, with details uh, with some of the schedule a that we're looking at which is not very clear um, and uh, some of the wording that's within this entire bylaw uh, kind of contradicts exactly what's happening today <clears throat> so therefore we're asking for a uh, resolution to rescind this vacation and bank time uh, policy and bring it into an administrative policy um, that I believe should be on your screens as well. It's an administrative policy A2020-01 um, with the 
bring me back into a vacation of bank plan policy, but it would be a little clearer, um, and it also would give us authority to approve bank time, or sorry, overtime and bank time, and how it gets used. Discussion? Councilor Delorier. On item seven um, or of, the, of the new policy, there's a lot more people in recreation. Do, do part-timers get, get vacation? Like, I guess you can, you can really li limit your, yourself here. You've got 30 people at the pool. It's gonna be hard to fit all that vacation plus the full-timers at the arena, only having two off at any given time. Yeah, I guess, I mean, this is probably, this was done before we had all this book the pool. Most of them are casual, um, that piece. So, yeah, maybe if that's something we'll need to take a look at um, and look at that as well as something. Because there's about, there's between eight and ten part-timers at the pool. Um, they are not whole pilot vacation mm -hmm. time. They used to get it paid out, but in the last uh, contract they now do, they do um, accrue it. So this is something we'll need to look at. But if you've got a couple of part-timers that are taking vacation at the pool, that prevents any full-timers from the arena from taking any, you know, you can you could have a, it wouldn't be long before, say, your whole summer is used up. Yeah. I'm not, I, I guess. I mean, I guess this is um, something that's been, um, they're working on. And I think that maybe part of this is, should be in camera. So I don't know if we should have much more further discussion on the policy itself. Councillor Gray. Yes, Your Worship. Um, I, I'm actually a little concerned that we end up doing piecemeal piece uh, things on personnel. These are the kind of things that we should have in a, a general policy because it's hard to connect vacation and bank time policies, um, how to use them when you don't connect them with how to earn them or whether or not there should be because we have a current moratorium on on uh, uh, overtime so there shouldn't be bank time uh, for at least for the last several months and going forward okay so uh, again, I, I guess I'm, I'm concerned about re rescinding the existing policy without the new policy you know being right on its heels to, to if the new policy is not quite ready I'm concerned I, I wouldn't want to rescind the existing one then you have no policy to, until the uh, new one is ready. Mr. Mayor, Council, um, this would be an administrative policy, and if you rescind this policy, you can definitely make uh, uh, changes to the administrative policy uh, how you see fit. So, for example, if uh, number seven is concerned of the maximum people of two um, for recreation, et cetera, you can, you can increase that number if you wish today. It's an administrative policy which can be kind of changed and tweaked at any time. Uh, so therefore, it doesn't really, wouldn't have to come back to council, it just be an administrative policy to, to correct things. Right. It's not a lot. A big policy, an administration policy. So, what, what, what is our procedure for, for like, can administration would unilaterally be able to change this then? The answer, the best answer we're going to give you is, is uh, yes and no, per se. Um, we, we, we brought administration policy forward. Um, if there's huge changes to this administrative policy, so in other words, things are coming down to administration and not a council policy. Um, so there, this could be a target, moving target. If you bring more people in, less people in, uh, vacation bank time, uh, labor laws change. Uh, so in other words, administration can start moving moving some of the, the targets. So we kind of brought both forward. And your current policy is, is not very clear whatsoever and is actually not being followed. Um, any time your current time is being, being uh, brought forward right now without any approval from anyone. It's just happening. Uh, schedule 8 on that is saying that it's supposed to be a CEO or a delegate that's actually doing it right now, which is not happening. So therefore, we're just trying to align uh, this one policy that currently through resolution 2016, which is not making a lot of sense to me right now, to bring something through towards an administrative policy that's there. Uh, if, 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 you know, if the council wishes, uh, you can, you can uh, 
we don't have to we don't have to rescind anything today. And if you wish, we can bring it to the council of holding to have another discussion. If that's where you really want to take it uh, to to make sure things are aligned. This is not uh, detrimental for me today to, to bring this forward or not. I just wanted to bring this forward that it's coming to December 31st. There's different things happening. Some people are holding time, um, and it doesn't make sense to this municipality. It's costing us a fortune what we're doing today. Councillor Gregg. I was just going to suggest it go to a committee of the whole meeting. So you're asking to table? Yes. Okay. You need a second to table? I think our I think our newest um, bylaws, although they haven't been enacted, suggest if anyone asked for it to go to the committee of the whole, it would go. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I don't think it needs to be tabled. I think it just needs to, uh, there's a motion to move it to uh, maybe the whole council of the whole, uh, where it can be further discussed. Okay. So a motion to uh, move to the committee of the whole that was made by Councillor Gray. Seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? So that will be moved to a cow meeting, at our next cow meeting. <clears throat> 10 .1. There it is. Resolve that the counts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 27012 to number 27062 for a total of $146,998.71. Payroll account checks number 4768 to number 4774 for a total of $92,551.78. Payroll accounts checks number 4775 to number 4780. For a total of seventy-two thousand seven hundred forty-seven and thirty-one cents, direct deposits totaling twenty thousand one hundred ninety-three and forty-five cents. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, hopefully, administration can answer this. It's I understand what the checks are, but it's to. Uh, uh, BDR services limited for the fire alarm panels. There's multiple checks here on different dates. Um, do they might make s separate trips to come out and inspect those panels? Uh, are we paying mileage on each one of those? Or can they be coordinated that uh, they make only one trip and inspect all our panels in one go instead of these piecemeal from what it looks like here? Uh, who wants to take that? Ms. Hinkleman? Also, yeah, for recreation, um, if they all come to the for one trip and do that, we're working on getting also the, the office to um, have that one trip for the whole time. Mr. Poole, anything there further? Uh, yeah, there there is the regular fee for service that we get from BDR, but we had to get them to come up because we did have. Well, I think council knows we have some issues with our alarm systems. They're actually, I believe they went back online today, but uh, well, whether I should say that in public or not. But anyways, uh, everything's back working, but there was an issue with uh, a few window breaks within the municipal office that we had to call them and, and come up to Swan River and uh, troubleshoot and fix. So that's the extra, the extra invoice. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2020 included 98,000 for back for the loader backhoe to be borne by borrowing. And whereas the loader backhoe has been purchased at a cost of $105,626.12, being $7,626.12 more than the authorized borrowing. Therefore, be it resolved that $7,626.12 be transferred from the Machinery Replacement Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund for the excess. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, do we know why the uh 
final purchase price was more than the, the quote for the uh, original $98,000. Mr. Poole. Uh, uh, no, I do not. Uh, the, I know that the warranty and the actual back were on two separate invoices. So right now I would have to look into why there's an extra $3,000. I'll have to get back to you on that. I was unaware of the 101, to be honest. Okay, so we can get back to uh, the rest of council and, and have an explanation for that, please. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas section 163 of the Municipal Act provide that the council may adopt an interim operating budget to have effect only until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now therefore be resolved the following interim operating budget be approved for the year 2021. General operating requirements, general government services 800,000, protected services 1.6 million, transportation services 1 million, environment health services 1.2 million, public health and welfare services 200,000, regional planning and development, 30,000, resource conservation and industrial, industrial development, 130,000, recreation and cultural services, 1.4 million, fiscal services, $600,000, water and sewer services, 1.4 million. Moved by, Councilor Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Lintoni. Discussion? Memorial. Um, where are we at uh, with administration in uh, getting uh, preliminary capital and operating budget? Mr. Gadina, maybe? Yeah. I mean, we've got the capital started. Um, operating work we're working on, so I Uh, the template was in place September 28th, and I've just been waiting for the directors to fill in their numbers. Okay. Directors are filling in their numbers? Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Resolved that the financial statements for the 11 months ending November 30th, 2020, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.5. Whereas the 2020 capital budget included $35,000 for an incident command vehicle with telemetry to be born from fire truck replacement reserve and the telemetry and enhancements to the vehicle have been purchased at a cost or net cost of, sorry, a cost net of GST of $34,190.71. Be it hereby resolved that $34,190 19.71 be transferred from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 11.1. Resolved that bylaw 25, 2017, be a bylaw of the town of Swan River to permit holiday and Sunday shopping be rescinded. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. This has to do with the new changes, I believe, to the to the act. Councilor Gray. 
Yes. Um, isn't this something that we should take some time to consider, including having input from the community as to what they want for that? Um, we don't. We're not required to rescind the bylaw. It may not have as much impact given the amendments, and we don't have the authority given the act. Um, and so it may leave us, for lack of a better word, lawless for the period of time. But um, wouldn't this be something that would behoove us to have, as I said, input from the community and some deeper consideration than just um, seeing it on one day and uh, passing it four days later? Any uh, Councillor Delore? Um, I, I could probably support looking at it a, a little uh, bit more because I see here in the, uh, the supplementary information it gives details on how to still have restrictions for other holidays besides Sundays and I think that's probably something we would want to look at. Okay. So this, this uh, if that's what the wish is, um, this is another motion to move to a cow then? That's fine. We can discuss our uh, the, the whole overall plan at a committee of the whole meeting. I'll move that. Um, but I, I, I think the plan should include more involvement um, uh, at, to get people's view on it. Uh, I think it's something that the community should have a right to consider more broadly. Mr. Mayor, Council, just to give you a... As Council Gray was saying, you know, it might be lawless, it might be toothless. However, bylaw can continue. Um, the reality is is that the, the municipal um, resolutions or the proposal for the, any, anything that comes from the province so it supersedes our bylaws anyway. Um, so what Councilor Gray was basically saying is this bylaw. Oh, Mr. 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 Gutro, can you move a mic closer to you? It's awfully hard to hear. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry. I'll come forward here. Um, so Mr. My apologies. Sorry. Is that better? So, Mr. Mayor, Council, um, basically, as Councilor Gray says, um, our, our bylaw basically could come lawless or toothless. Um, the, the, the provincial uh, legislation actually supersedes us. Um, Councilor Gray, from my understanding, what he's under, what he wants to do is to, to let the community say, do we want to withdraw our our our, solid, our holiday shopping? You can keep the bylaw in place. Um, I'm not sure really what, what what it's going to do, except for if people really want to open up, they can open up on Sunday shopping. Um, I don't know what we could really send our bylaw officer out there. It could be probably challenged. Uh, so therefore, uh, I leave it to you. If you would like to bring it back to Council Hall, you can bring a resolution forward. Um, however, I'm not sure really what tooth, will, tooth, is, tooth or toothless it will bring to us. Councillor Gray. Uh, yeah, if you look at at the bio, at the amendment, and and I thought I, I looked through it, and it seems to me that N two is a uh, the municipal act. I'm sorry, adding um, to section two thirty two one of the municipal act is one of the powers of a municipality. So we would have the right to make specific, but I think we have to do it subsequent to that law, um, which effectively eradicated. The premises of the previous bylaw but i think we should move slowly on it. it it may be that the position of the community is that we should be open we should let people open when they want it may be that they think there should be a, a fixed day that there is closure we, we we really need to move slowly and, and we have the full power under section three of the amendment of the amending act what's it called again i, I can't remember the name of the act retail business hours operation uh, of operation act um uh, it specifically provides that municipalities will have the right to determine hours of operation. And so I think we should take our time and do it properly. Um, the first time it, it will, given the COVID restrictions, it's not going to really have a big impact on us. I don't think this coming year, as far as I can see. What's the wish of council? I think we should wait did somebody make one, make that motion, or, or are we going to vote on this? I moved on. I moved it moved to a cow meeting. Okay, so Councilor Gray has made a motion to move oh, this sorry. item to uh, our next.
next cow meeting. Second by Councilor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven point two. Result of the bylaw number 18, 2020, being bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 7, 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a firefighting incident command vehicle be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Three result of bylaw number 19, 2020, being bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 8, 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a loader backhoe be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 18, the bylaw number 18, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 7, 2020, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for the purchase of a firefighting incident command vehicle be read a third time and passed. Recorded vote. All in favor? Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> moved, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? And Councilor Gray, you abstain? I do. Okay. Did you get those? It's carried. 11.5. Resolve the bylaw number 19, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 8, 2020, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for the purchase of a loader backhoe be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Recorded vote discussion. Mr. Poole. Uh, just to let Council know, was. Uh when we went for for the borrowing bottle on that on the loader back of the reason uh it had ninety eight thousand is it did not include the warranty so we we asked for that borrowing without the warranty we got that uh we got that's the amount is uh that's that was the amount that was asked for from the province when we started our borrowing bylaw process and uh it's not included is the extended warranty that's the difference so the difference was the cost of the extended warranty that's correct and you said something about the problem. just looking through our well in order to have a boring bylaw you, you need to submit to the province terry can explain those processes but what went the number that went to the province was ninety eight thousand, which did not include the uh, extended warranty. No, I, I understood that. I just didn't quite. You were breaking up a little bit, so I didn't hear everything that you were saying. Okay, discussion. Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? Council Gray, you abstain? I do. Okay. That's carried. <clears throat> Moving on. Nothing from number 12, number 13, or item 13, resolved that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? This is to do with mainly all personnel. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're now in camera. 